Welcome to part 3 of lecture 3 of aerospace propulsion. So we can use alternate rocket nozzle designs to address the disadvantages of the typical bell-shaped nozzle. We'll talk about two of these today. The first is an extendable nozzle and the second is the external expansion nozzle. So an extendable nozzle basically has a larger diameter or larger area uh, expansion which can be either deployed or retracted and this is normally begins retracted and deploys at higher altitudes basically it allows us to achieve an expansion ratio closer to the ideal value over a wider range of atmospheric pressures but if you started putting a bunch of these one around the other the system could become very mechanically complex and very heavy so in practice, uh, two operating positions is, is about the practical limit. Um, but this is done, and it does help. The other option is to look at what we call an external expansion nozzle. This is a very different looking geometry, which has a distinguishing feature of a very uh, long center body or spike uh, that goes down to zero radius and extends far past the outer rim of uh, the, the nozzle. So we have the contraction and then area expansion and then the outer region stops but the inner uh, region keeps going down all the way to zero radius. Again this design has pros and cons. So a couple of advantages are that at the design back pressure there'll be no curvature of the outer streamline. Right, so this outer streamline will basically be perfectly straight because there's a matching of static pressure between the inside and the outside. Uh, and the flow is all well behaved and attached everywhere. And at low pressures where the atmospheric pressure, sorry, where the, uh, yeah, where the atmospheric pressure, uh, it, sorry, at low altitude, excuse me, low altitude where the atmospheric pressure is greater than the exit pressure, this bounding streamline simply moves inwards. Right, so the, basically the stream tube area decreases due to the pressure difference, but uh, the flow follows this shape smoothly and the inner part of the flow is unaffected. So the bounding streamline moves inwards, but there's no separation and therefore we still get very good performance at low altitudes. Anytime we're dealing with the off-design operation in, um, in this kind of nozzle, well really in any supersonic nozzle, but it's particularly important here, um, we're dealing with shocks and expansion fans in the supersonic flow. Right, so the curvature of the flow due to the angle changes along the spike occur via a series of uh, expansion fans and oblique shocks. These are the only ways to turn a supersonic flow. Right? If you want to turn a supersonic flow while slowing it down, you use an oblique shock. If you want to turn a supersonic flow while speeding it up, you use an ex there'll be an expansion fan. And we're going to talk about these phenomena in more detail later today. Another advantage of the uh, central spike type design is that we can use modular combustors which add redundancy. Right? Because we've got an annular geometry, it's a bit more like a jet engine. We can have a series of small combustors around the annulus um, and, and instead of one large combustion changer, chamber. And the advantage here is that if one combustion chamber fails for some reason, it does not result in complete engine failure. But as in all aspects of engineering, there's never a perfect solution and of course the external expansion nozzle has some disadvantages too. So what do you think might be not so great? about this design. So I want you to think about engineering factors here that are not aerodynamic. So uh, aerodynamically this is a fantastic solution um, but for non-aerodynamic reasons it does have some disadvantages and I'd like you to try to come up take a few minutes and think what those might be for yourself before moving on to the next part of the video. <laughs> 